Hello viewers, this is Ronald taking you through the story for A Level Pure Mathematics. In this video, we are going to go through the topic of binomial and macro rings expansion. So, this video is suitable for students in Senior 5 and Senior 6 offering principal mathematics as part of their combination. So, let's first look at the course outline for this paper. Now, Math Paper 1 ha can be divided into five parts. The first part is algebra, where two questions come in section A and two in section B, and these are the topics. Next part is trigonometry, where two one comes in section A and one in section B, and these are the topics. Next is geometry, where one comes in section A and one in section B, and these are the topics. The next is vectors, where one comes in section A, one in section B, and these are the topics. And lastly, calculus, where three questions come in section A and three in section B. So, so far, calculus is well done, vectors is well done, trigonometry is well done, and algebra, we have algebra, there is this part of complex numbers which is half ticked. Half ticked means that the video will be remade, but to, for you to make this video, you need knowledge of geometry. Therefore, after this topic of binomial theorem and Macarin's theorem we are going to first pause a bit on algebra and go to geometry to cover all these six topics then after that we shall be able to come back and finish our algebra with complex numbers and by that we shall have completed the syllabus for math paper one So binomial theorem states that if n is a positive integer, then this term, this expression can be expanded using this formula. For example, that means that x plus a to power n is equal to the summation of from r equal to 0 to r equal to n of n combination r multiplied by x raised to the power r multiplied by a raised to the power n minus r. So this is a formula which you need to remember. But we, are going to, but we are going to derive an expression which will help us to do these questions on binomial expansion. So you already know that com n combination r is expanded to become n factorial over n minus r factorial multiplied by r factorial. So when I expand this summation, I'll come up with this. Now this one, for it... How, how is it expanded? You'll come here, first repress r equal to 0. So when I put r equal to 0 here, I'll come up with n combination 0, put r 0 here, I'll come up with x power 0, put 0 here, I'll come up with 8 power n minus 0. Then put r equal to 1. So this gives me n combination 1, x power 1, 8 power n minus 1. Then put 2 here, it will give you n combination 2, x power 2, a to power n minus 2. Then put 3 here, we'll come up with n combination 3, x to power 3, and a to power n minus 3. So the process continues up to the end. So this series starts from r equal to 0 up to r equal to n. That is why here there, is, there are these three dots to mean that there are more terms here, but we're interested in this last term. So this last term, put r equal to n here to come up with n combination n, x power n and a to power n minus n. We are still expanding, so we are, we are going to first expand this combination. So let's start with n combination 0. n combination 0 gives you n factorial over n minus 0 factorial multiplied by 0 factorial. Now when you use a calculator, you realize that 0 factorial is equal to 1. Therefore, you remain with n factorial over n factorial. So this will cancel to give you 1. So that has been n combination 0. What about n combination 1? For n combination 1 gives you n factorial over n minus 1 factorial multiplied by 1 factorial. Now still when you press your calculator, 1 factorial will be equal to 1. Therefore you remain with, and this one can be expanded to become n multiplied by n factorial over n factorial. Then this can cancel to remain with only n. 
So that was n combination one. Now we shall go to n combination two. So n combination two is expanded as n factorial over n minus two factorial multiplied by two factorial. Now when I expand this one, it is the same as n multiplied by n minus one multiplied by n minus two factorial. Then from there we realize that n minus two factorial and n minus two factorial can cancel remain with n in bracket multiplied by n minus one over two factorial. So now we shall go to n combination three. So n combination three is expanded as n factorial over n minus three factorial multiplied by three factorial. Then this one can be expanded as n minus n multiplied by n minus one multiplied by n minus two multiplied by n minus three factorial. Think you remember that under the topic of permutations and combinations. Then this and this can cancel. You remain with this. So that was n combination three. Now we shall go to n combination n. So n combination n gives gives you n factorial over n minus n factorial multiplied by n factorial. Now n minus n is zero and zero factorial is one, so remain with n factorial here over n factorial there, which gives you one. So substituting these a combinations into the above expansion, for example, remember we, in this expansion we had n combination zero n combination 1, n combination 2, n combination 3, up to n combination n. So whenever there is n combination 0, I'm going to put there this, and here I'll put there that, here I'll put there this, and here I'll put there that. Then for n combination 1, I'll put what I got. Now when I do that, this is what I'm going to come up with. So I'll come up with that as my expansion. So the special case is when this a is equal to 1. So when it is equal to 1, it implies that everywhere where there is a, you will keep putting there 1. So put 1 there, put 1 there, put 1 here, put 1 there. So when I do that, this is what I'll come up with. So this is the general formula for binomial expansion which we are interested in. And the good thing is that this formula is available in your mathematical logbooks in case you have forgotten how it is stated. For example, in your mathematical logbooks, there is this one which we first derived where there is A and those, but our interest is this formula. Under analysis of expansions, you look for formula 52 in the third edition and you come up with this expansion. So this is what we are interested in. I think we realize that this here, they use a bracket of n r. Now here, this, when it is math 2, it, it doesn't mean, sorry, when it is under combinations, this one does not mean vectors. Most students confuse it and they think it is vectors, but this one is another way of writing n combination r. But for consistency, it is better you get used to the one which has a c. But you should bear it in mind that this is n combination r as long as it comes to this topic of expansions and combinations. So there's, there's something you need to know about this formula. One is that you start with this one to, and put it here. Then go to this power and put it there. Then multiply by this here. That is the second term. The third term, you first write this this coefficient, which was the power, then reduce it by 1. Then over 2 factorial. And then here to now be squared. When here it is 2 factorial, here, here it will be squared. That is the third term. What about the fourth term? Fourth term, write the whole of this and again reduce by 1 to come up with this, n minus 2. Then now write 3 factorial. Here it was 2 factorial. Now it will be 3 factorial. And therefore here it will now be x cubed. So the process continues until you reach the last term which is x power n. So there is something we need to remember 
is that okay we already saw that this is a variable in the mathematical logbooks but there's something we need to note is that in the derivation this theorem was in this th this theorem n was taken to be a positive integer i think you remember that when we are starting our derivation because you cannot use c n when it is a fraction but what it should be in the at the back of your mind is that this n can be any value it can be a fraction it or it can be a negative integer or it can be a positive integer but that is you when you are using this expression therefore most questions you will find when this power is a fraction a negative fraction a positive fraction or a negative integer or a positive integer as long as you remember this expression of expansion it means that you can easily do attempt those questions So now that you have grasped the, the expression for binomial expansion, we can now go through some questions. Let's start with the question which came last year, and that is Neb 2020, paper 1, question 9b, and says, Roman 1, expand 1 plus x power 4 raised to the power negative a half up to the fourth term. So we are still going to follow the same procedure we have got. So how is it? Like I said, first as this x this formula works when here it is one. Now first get this one, put it here. That is the first term. The second term, you look at this power, put it here, then multiply by this other value which has x. I think you see that it's x power four has been carried there. Now that gives you the second term. What about the third term? Third term means write this power. Then again, multiplied by that very power minus 1. So when I say negative a half minus 1, I'll come up with negative 3 over 2. Then after that, I think you remember that we said divide by n fac divide by 2 factorial. And that 2 factorial is here. Then because this is 2 factorial, here the term which is here will be raised to the power 2. That's why you see x power 4 in brackets and there is a power 2 there. That is the third term. What about the fourth term? Fourth term, first write these ones here. Then add on another term, but another term to get it, get this one, negative 3 over 2, and say minus 1, you'll get negative 5 over 2, which is here. Then remember we said, if this is 2 factorial, then this third term, the fourth term, it will be over 3 factorial. And because this is 3 factorial, this other term here will be raised to the power 3 and so on now there's there are these dots to mean that the expansion continues but in the question they said expand up to the fourth term so this is the first term second term fourth third term and fourth term that's why we stop there but we put these dots to show that the expansion was still continuing and also you need to note that we are using approximation sign. So if the power is a fraction or a negative whole number, then you have to use this approximation sign. Then if the power is a whole number, then you have to expand up to that very power. That you don't put up approximation sign, but you put equal signs as we shall see for later in this video. Now next is to use the calculator and simplify. When I use this, this is 1, and this one gives me negative a half x power 4, then the whole of this gives me this, and the whole of this gives me that. So in that case, I have expanded up to the fourth term, and basically that is what they wanted, but you must be keen to remember the approximation symbol. So that was Roman 1. What about Roman 2? Roman 2 says, use the first two terms of the expansion to find the value of this, correct to two significant figures. So they want you to use only these first two terms. Okay, so the first thing to do is to find out what x is equivalent to. So you come here and say that this given expression the same as this so this is 144.0144 is the same as 144 plus 0 0.0144 
but remember in our expansion here one term was equal to, was a positive one therefore that means that you have to factorize out 144 that as you can see it here to be able to get to one here then this other term will be now 0 0.0144 over 144 which has been pulled out that is the knowledge of factorization then now think realize that we are putting box bracket here meaning that this power affects this bracket and also this value and therefore 144 four raised to the power negative a half is equal to 1 over 12 then this one 0 0.0144 over 144 when you reduce it it will become 1 over 10,000 therefore now by comparison x to power 4 is equal to this remember here to in the in the previous expansion it was 1 plus x power 4 therefore a 1 is already catered 4 then this will now be equal to x power 4 that's why we're saying that x power 4 is equal to that so your common substitute remember in our ex expansion it was 1 minus a half x power 4 now we have already got the value of x power 4 so you are coming and substitute it should be 1 minus a half times x power 4 which is this but remember there was 1 over 12 outside so you have to maintain that 1 over 12 here then when I use the a calculator this box bracket will give me this the approximation sign must be maintained now when I use the calculator further I'll come up with that value then after that I'll remember the accuracy they wanted accuracy was two significant figures so you shall count one two and write that as the final answer so that was question one and I believe you have mastered the concept behind binomial expansion so now we shall go to question two which came from your name 2019 paper one question 14 and says expand square root of this up to the term in x squared then hence find the value of this to four significant figures so let's start with this part of expanding now expanding there's no way you can expand this denominator so what you do you use the knowledge of indices and bring it up when you bring it up the power becomes a negative that is why here you see a negative a half So what I'm going to do, I'm going to expand this one alone and also expand this one alone using binomial expansion then I combine and multiply the two. So when I expand this one alone I'll come up with this for example like I've said first write this one that is the first term. Second term get this power put it here then multiply it by this other term which is 2x. Then here the third term get this power put it here then multiply it by this minus one give you this so a half minus one is negative a half that's why it's negative a half here but remember we said you have to divide by two factorial which is here and because we are dividing by two factorial here this other term will be raised to the power two so that is the third term third term and i think we have got what we wanted because they said expand up to x squared so we have already got x squared here that is why we stop there but remember to pull these dots and this approximation sign so now when I use the calculator this one is the same this one gives me that and this one gives me that so that is this expansion what about this second one for the second one still we shall follow the same procedure the procedure says first write this one here then get this power write it here multiplied by the whole of this that's why you see a negative x there then next write this power here for the third term then ask yourself when i say negative a half minus one what do i get i'll get negative three over two then we put it there now this third term we divide by two factorial and we power and we get this term and raise it the power two when this is two factorial so yeah, so, so we shall also so stop there because they said expand up to x squared. Then we shall use the calculator. This one is the same. Then this one gives me that, and this one gives me that. 
So now I've got this and I've got this, meaning that the whole of this will be equal to this multiplied by this. And that's what we are going to do in the next slide. So this will be equal to this times that. Now when I open brackets, now here opening brackets is a little funny because we don't want to exceed x squared. So what I'm going to do, I'll get this one multiplied by the whole of this bracket to give me this. Then get this one multiplied by the whole of this bracket to give me this. Then this one multiplied by the whole of this bracket to give me this. Now how is it done? When I multiply this one throughout this, I'll come up with this. But you must keep in mind that you stop at x squared. Now, but when it comes to this other term, when I multiply this x with throughout this, x by 1 gives me x, and x by half x gives me x squared. I think you realize that we stop here and just put plus dash dash dash, because if I say x multiplied by this, I'll come up with x cubed. But the question does not want x cubed. So you just put do the dash 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 to mean that the expansion would have continued but they restricted us to x to power 2. What about this term? This term times this gives you this. Now I stop there because if I say this times this I'll come up with x cubed which is not needed. The next is to collect like terms and I'll come up with this which is the required answer. Now for the hence part. For the hence part, they told us that hence find the value of this correct to four significant figures. So I shall do some algebra here. You realize that this one, 1.04 is the same as 1 plus times 0 0.02. Why? Because we want to express it in this form. 1 here, then this 2 is here, meaning that now the x is 0 0.02. Similarly, down it is 1 minus x, therefore this one is the same as 1 minus x, but we already saw that x is equal to 0 0.02, so we put it here. And the good thing is that when you get use the calculator, this one gives you this very value. So what does that mean? It implies that x is equal to 0 0.02. So now that I've got the value of x, I'll come and substitute for x in this expansion here to be able to get this value. But after getting this value, I will remember that they want the answer to four significant figures. So count 1, 2, 3, 4. You stop here and write that as the required value. You remember to set the accuracy in brackets. Now we shall go to question 3 which came from your NAB 2017 paper 1 question 1 and it says the coefficient of the first three terms of the expansion this are in arithmetic progression. Find the value of n. So they said the first three terms we are going to expand it to get to expand to get the first three terms. Now when I expand, like I said, get this one, put it here, that is the first term. Second term, get this power, then multiply it by this other term to get the second term. Then the third term, we said get this very power, get this power, put it here, then this very power minus 1 gives you n minus 1. Then remember to divide by 2 factorial. And because it's 2 factorial, it means that this other term will be raised to the power 2. They said first three terms, that is why we stop at the first three terms. Therefore, we shall look for the coefficients, for their coefficients. Expand and realize that this is the first term, this is the second term, and this is the third term. But they told us that they are in arithmetic progression. Now, arithmetic progression means that they e there is a common difference. So, we shall come and say, this minus this is the same as this minus, is equal to this minus that in this line, as we see in that line. So, now we have an equation with only one unknown. The next thing to do is to simplify until we get the value of n. So, when I simplify, I'll come up with 
a quadratic and I can either factorize or use bulldozer method to come up with the values of n. So by when I factorize n will be equal to 1 or n is equal to 8. But we know that n cannot be equal to 1 therefore n will be equal to 8. Now we shall go to question 4 which came from UNEB 2014 paper 1 question 13 and says part A says find the first three terms of the expansion this and use it to find this correct to two decimal places. Then part B expand this in ascending powers of x as far as x squared term. So let's start with part A. So for part A, we are going to expand this. But remember, in the expansion we derived, in the binomial expansion we derived, one term must be positive 1. But in this case, we have 2. Therefore, we have to look for a way of making it positive 1 by factorizing out 2. When I factorize out 2, it becomes here 1, which is, which is what we want. Then this will become x over 2. But remember, we have put it, everything in box bracket, meaning that this power affects this and this. Now 2 to power 6 is the same as 64 which is there, then this one the power remain there 6. Now that we have positive 1 as one of the terms, then we can use the formula, the method we know. So here I'll first maintain the 64 here, then I'll use the method I know we know to get this expansion. The method we know says the first term will always be positive 1. Second term, look at this power, it will be here. Then, after that, I'll look at this other co other term, which is negative x over 2, right as it is, negative x over 2. That is the second term. What about the third term? Third term, I'll get this power here, then this power minus 1 gives me 5, so I'm applied by 5. But I'll remember we said, you have to divide by 2 factorial, so divide by 2 factorial, which is there. And because this is 2 factorial, then the other term will be raised to the power 2. Now they say the first three terms, so this is first term, second term, third term. So you stop there and just put the dash 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 to show that the expansion was still continuing. The next is to simplify. So when I simplify, I'll come up with this as the required expansion. Now the hence part they told us to use it to get this value to correct to two decimal places. So now for this value. When I compare it with this, I'll realize that now this power is the same, so it cancels to remain with this equal to this. That means that x will be equal to 0 0.002. Now that I've got the value of x, I'll come and substitute it here and here. Then I'll use the calculator to come up with that value. And that is the required answer. So now we shall go to part B which says expand this in ascending powers of x as far as x squared as far as the x squared term. So this one I can factorize it by realizing that this one now is the same as this. Rearranging it to become a quadratic gives you this. The factors, I look for two factors whose sum is negative 3 and product is positive 2. Those factors are negative 2 and negative 1. That is why this negative 3 has been replaced by negative 2 and negative 1. Then factorize by grouping. When I group these two, I'll come up with this. Then group these two, I'll come up with that. Then now x minus 1 is common, so I can also pull it out, remain with 2x minus 1, which is here, then multiply by x minus 1, which is that. So what does that mean? It means that this expansion is the same as this expansion. So we shall use the knowledge we know because here one of the term is positive 1. So get the, the first term is positive 1 which is here. 
Then second term will be get this power, put it here, then multiplied by this other term which is negative 2x which is there. Then the third term will say get this power which is here, then this power minus 1 gives you 4, so multiply by 4. But remember we said we have to divide by 2 factorial which is here, and because this is 2 factorial, the power on the other term will be power 2. Okay, that is this. What about this one? Now this one still the first term is that. Then the high, the power is 5, put it here, multiplied by this other term which is negative x. Then the third term will be now, this power which is here, then 5 minus 1 is 4, so multiply by 4, divide by 2 factorial, and, this is, and because this is 2 factorial, the power here will be positive 2. Now we have expanded using binomial theorem, now next is to open brackets. When I open brackets, I will come up with that and simplify to come up with that. I think we realize that we expand in such a way that we don't exceed x squared. For example, when this one multiplies throughout this, you'll come up with these first three terms. Then this one times this is this, and this one times this. This one, sorry, this one times this gives you this, which is squared. Now, because it gives you squared, you don't again exceed, continue to get this because when I say 10x times 10x squared, I'll come up with x cubed, which is not required. So I leave that, then I go to the next sum. So this times this will give you that. Then simplify to come up with this. So now we shall go to question 5, which came from UNEB 2010, paper 1, question 9, and says expand square root of this in ascending powers of x to a term in x squared. So the thing, let's start with that. So like we said before, we can't expand denominators. What we do, we use the knowledge of indices to realize that this one is the same as this time was that. The next is to expand. When I expand this one, I'll come up with this. I believe by now you know how to expand using the binomial expansion. So when I expand this, I'll come up with this. And then open brackets, simplify, I'll come up with that. Open brackets, I'll come up with that. And like I told you, as you multiply, you don't exceed x squared because they told us that it only stops at x squared. That's why you see these dashes here to imply that the expansion was still continuing. Collect like terms will come up with that which is the required expansion. Then part B Roman 1 part B Roman 1 says using the expansion of 1 plus x power half up to the term in x cubed find the value of square root of 1.08 to 4 decimal places. Okay, let's first do Roman 1. So Roman 1, expanding this, we have already seen that is equal to this, but they, he, this time they told us up the term in x cubed, that's why you have added there this other term. So simplify, I'll come up with that. But they wanted you to use it to get this value, so this one is the same as this. And when you compare it, 1 is already here, meaning that x is equal to 0 0.08. Now that I've got the value of x, I'll come and substitute it here to come up with this. Use a calculator, you'll come up with this. But they told us 4 decimal places, so you round off 4 decimal places to give you that. And that is what they wanted. So now we shall go to Roman 2. Now Roman 2 says Roman 2 says express this in the form a over b root c and hence evaluate root 3 correct to 3 significant figures. Now this one, if you use your calculator and change it into fraction form, it will give you 27 over 25. And 27 is the same as 3 times 9. 
Now this 3 times 9, it means that the square root of 3, square, sorry, square root of 9 is 3 which is here, then square root of 25 is 5 which is here, so we are in the square under root we are only remained with 3, that is why you see here root 3 there. So we have expressed in the, in the form of a over b root c. So for the hence part, we shall come and say that this one is the same as this, and we already saw that this is equal to this, meaning that also these two are equal. That's why you see here this is equal to that. Now when I make root through the subject, I'll come up with this, but I remember they told you that the answer should be rounded off to three significant figures, so the, uh, when I round off to three significant figures, I'll come up with 1.73. And that's what they wanted. So now we shall go to question 6, which came from UNEB 2009, paper 1, question 9a, and says, using the, binom using the binomial theorem, expand this as far as the fourth term, and hence evaluate this to one decimal place. So like I told you, the ex binomial expansion we know, or the, or the one which is easy, easier is when one of the terms is positive 1. But in this case, it was 8, meaning that we have to make it positive 1 by factorizing out 8 here. Then I think you realize that this box bracket means that this power affects both this 8 and this. So h to the power 2 over 3 gives you 4, gives you four which is there. Then this one also is raised to the same power 2 over 3. Now that we have positive 1 as one of the terms, we can use easily use binomial expansion. First maintain your 4 here, then come and expand. So the first term is always this positive 1. Then the second term, get this power, which is here, and multiply it by the other term, which is negative 3x, which is, as you see it there. Then the third term, get this power here, then ask yourself, this power minus 1 will give you negative 1 over 3, so multiply by 1 over 3. 1 over 3. Then remember to divide by 2 factorial and because you divide by 2 factorial it means that the other term will be raised to the power 2. That is the third term. Fourth term, write these ones here. Then ask yourself, negative 1 over 3 minus 1 gives you negative 4 over 3 which is that. Then divide by 3 factorial and raise, it to the, and raise the other term to power 3. I believe you by now you know that. The next is to simplify and then open brackets. So with that we have exp we have used binomial theorem to expand this as up to the fourth term. So one, two, three, four. Then part B or the hence part they said evaluate four to power two or three to one decimal place. So the first thing to do is to look for a way of getting x. Now when I compare this with this, it means that this power is the same. Therefore, this one will be equal to this 4. Then make x the subject, x will be 1 over 6, meaning that x is 1 over 6, therefore, this one we shall substitute where there is x, we shall put there 1 over 6 in the expansion we got in the previous slide. Then use a calculator, you'll come up with this, but they said one decimal point, so you round off to one decimal point. Then now we shall go to question 7 which came from your name, 2008, paper 1, question 15a, and says, find the binomial expansion of this, use your expansion to estimate this to four decimal places. Now here, they have not given you up to which term to end, because the power is a positive integer. Therefore, you are going to expand up to this very power, which is x power 5, and 2, you don't need the approximation sign you will have to use the equal sign. Think realize that now after this, I've not put approximation here, I've only put equal to, because I'm going to expand up to x to power 5. But the procedure is the same. First term is always this, then second term will be this, multiplied by the whole of this, which is here. Third term it will be 5 times 4 over 2 factorial, multiplied by this other term which is here, raise the power 2. Fourth, fourth term will be 5 times 4 times 3 over 3 factorial, then the other term raised to the power 3. 
the next term will be 5 times 4 times 3 times 1 over 4 factorial the other term raised to the power 4 mm, lastly it will be 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1 over 5 factorial then the other term raised to the power 5 next is to use the calculator to simplify and that will be the answer I think we realize that here we are not putting there the plus dash 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 because the expansion is entirely complete they said use your exp expansion to estimate this value to four decimal places the first thing to do is to look for a way of getting the value of x to use so when I compare this, these powers will cancel, so I remain with this equal to this. And when I make x the subject, x will be 0 0.25, which is a quarter. Therefore, I'll come and see that this one is the same as this. Where there is x, you put there a quarter. And then you use your calculator to come up with this. But they said 4 decimal places, so you round off to 4 decimal places. Now we shall go to question 8, which came from UNEB 2006, paper 1, question 15a, and says, expand this, and then find this correct to three decimal places. Now here they didn't specify whether used by normal expansion or any other method. And because this power is a whole number or a positive integer, it implies that we can easily use Pascal's triangle. Now how is Pascal's triangle done? First come and write 1 then write another one here and write another one here our aim is to make something like a triangle just like the word is now one plus one gives you two put it here then after that you'll put one here and also put one here then next you say this plus this is three and this plus this is three then to make a triangle you have to put one here and one here so let's do that one there one there then next remember we are we can't stop because you have not yet got power 4 yet is tubed so this plus this is 4 this plus this is 6 this plus this is 4 then to make a triangle we put one here and one here so let's do that one there one there now we stop here because this one is the same as this power okay so now let's expand this one how is it expanded get this one raise the power 4 multiplied by now you keep on reducing the powers for a so this is 8 power 4 8 power 3 8 power 2 8 power 1 8 power 0 that's why there's nothing like a but for then this other term you keep on increasing the power this was bit power 0 that's why there's no b here b to power 1 b to power 2 bit power 3 b to power 4 then after that this Pascal Pascal's triangle helps you to get the coefficients the quotient of the first term is positive 1, second term is positive 4, third term is positive 6, fourth term is positive 4, and the last one is positive 1. So as simple as that. So we have finished expanding, let's go to the hence part. Hence part, the first thing to do is to look for a way of getting the value of A and B. So A is 1 and B is that. Double come and substitute where there is a put 1 and where there is b put 0 0.996. Use the calculator, you will come up with that. Simplify and round off to the required number of decimal places. And basically that's what they wanted. Question 9 came from UNEB 2005, paper 1, question 11a and says, determine the binomial expansion of this and hence evaluate this correct to two, signif two decimal places. So the good thing is that the one of the terms is positive 1, so it will be a little easier. Get this term, put it here, then next is get this power, put it here, multiply by this term, which is there. The other term will be now this power 4 times 3 over 2 factorial, then the other term raised to the power 2. Then this one will be 4 times 3 times 2 over 3 factorial, then the other term raised to the power 3. Then 4 times 3 times 2 times 1 over 4 factorial, then the other term raised to the power 4. I think realize that we are putting an equal sign because we are expanding up to the very last term in the expansion. Now next is to simplify and when I simplify I'll come up with that. Now for the hence part we have to look for getting the value of x. When I compare 
So this one is the same as this, but now expansion we need positive 1. So I'll factorize out 2 to come up with that. But this power affects both this and this, therefore 2 to the power 4 gives you 16. Inside I remain with x1 plus 1 over 20. Now when I compare that bracket, this with this, it implies that x over 2 is equal to 1 over 20. Therefore I'll come here and say that, By comparison, x over 2 is equal to 1 over 20 implies that x is equal to 1 over 10. Now that I've got the value of x, I can easily get this one, which will be, remember there was 16 outside, so put it outside, then where there is x, put there 1 over 10. Use a calculator to simplify and round off to the required accuracy. Then question 10 came from your neighbor 2001, paper 1, question 6, and says, expand this in descending powers. Now, this question is a little unique because the questions we have been doing, we have been expanding in ascending powers. But this question wants you to expand in descending powers, including the term in x power negative 4. If x is equal to 9, find the percentage error in using the first two terms of the expansion. Now the question is, how do you expand in descending powers? For you to expand in descending powers, look first pull out 1x, like we have done here. This was, this was already achieved, but we have already got our 1. But for you to expand descending powers, pull out 1x to come up with this part. Then we do that, this negative 2 affects this and this, so we'll come up with this. Now, because this is 1 over x, it implies that now they will, when you expand, they will be descending powers, because they are negative powers. And that is why you see here they said x up the power of x power negative 4. So when I expand, I'll still use the same concept, but this one is first maintained outside, then use the concept, first term is 1. Second term is this power multiply by this other term then third term is this power then this power minus 1 is negative 3 then over 2 factorial then the other term is raised to the power 2 now we stop there because this x power negative 4 sorry x power negative 2 times this x power negative 2 will give you x power negative 4 which they want so we stop there and simplify then open brackets to come up with the term they want which is there so now we shall go to the other part which is that if x is equal to 9 find the percentage error in using the first two terms of the expansion so we are going to use these first two terms that means that where there is x you have put there 9 so when we do that we are going to come up with this expression So let's start with the approximate value. Approximate value gives you this, which is approximately equal to that. So they didn't space. So here you use six decimal places because they didn't specify. Then exact value is this one. Now here it is ten to the power negative two. Use the calculator to come up with this. Then percentage error is error. Now error is equal to exact minus approximate, but absolute. Therefore, exact value is this, abs absolute is this, sorry, approximate is that, over exact. Then multiply by 100. Use a calculator to come up with this percentage. And that is what they wanted. Then question 11 came from your neighbor 2000, paper 1, question 10b, and says, expand this as far as the term in x squared and hence evaluate root 8 correct to 3 decimal places. So I'm going to still use the same method of expanding because it's positive 1. It will give you that. Then simplify to give you that. Then for the hence part, the first thing to do is look for a way of getting x. So when I get this root 8, it's the same as 9 minus 1. So factorize out 9 to come up with this. And this power affects this and this. Therefore, 9 to power half gives you 3, and this one remains. The, then by comparison, you realize that this one is already catered 4, and this one is x over 3 is 1 over 9. So now that I've got the value, 
now that I, I can get the value of x I'll easily get the required value of root 8 so root 8 where there is x I'll put there 1 over 3 then use the calculator uh, to come up with that then remember the accuracy it was 3 decimal places then question 12 came from your neighbor 1997 paper 1 question 16b and says expand this as far as the term in x cubed use your expansion to reduce this cube root of 24 correct with three significant figures so we shall still go through the same procedure expanding this will give you this i believe by now you know it then simplify to get that then for the hence part look for getting the value of x so this 24 is the same as 27 minus 3 then this this here pull out 27 to come up with this then this power affects this one to give you this 3 and this power also affects this to give you that therefore now by comparison you can easily get the value of x so shall come here and say that by comparison x will be 1 over 9 therefore this one is equal to where there is x we put there 1 over 9 the next is to use the calculator to come up with this but remember to round off the required accuracy then question 13 says question 13 came from your neighbor 1992 paper 1 question 3 and says expand this up to and and this is and there was a d including the term of x cubed so let's first do that so still when I use the rules of indices I'll come up with this I believe by now you know why because you can't expand a denominator so expanding this one gives you this then simplify by using a calculator to come up with that what about this one when I expand that I'll come up with this then simplify using the calculator to come up with that now next is to multiply this with that so when I do that this is what I'm going to come up with open brackets I believe by now you know how to expand such exp expressions with this dash 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 you must ensure that you don't exceed x cubed as the question requires simplify will come up with that now let's go to the hence part the hence part hence part says hence find the value of this to four significant figures and the deduction says deduce the value of root 51 to three significant figures so let's start with the hence part So the first thing to do is to look for of getting the value of x. So this means that when I compare, x will be equal to 0 0.01. The comma substitute where there is x put there 0 0.01 to come up with that value as 0 0.020 to 40 significant figures. So that was the hence part. What about the deduction part? For the deduction, you realize that this one, we already know that this is equal to that, therefore, but this one, even use the calculator and change it to fraction, you come up with this. And 49 squared of 49 is 7, so it comes out. But I want to make this one the subject, so make it the subject, I'll come up with this to the required accuracy. Then question 14 says, question 14 came from your neighbor 1991, paper 1, question 1a, and says, write down the expansion of this in ascending powers of x as far as the term in x power 4 the new expansion to find square root of 8 correct to 4 significant figures so we are going through the same procedure square root is the same as power half so you use the same method to expand then use a calculator and simplify to come up with that then they want you to use it to get the square root of 80 So for the next part, square root of 80 is the same as 80 minus 1 raised to the power half. Pull out 80 1 to come up with this. Now 80 1 to power half gives you 9. Then this one also remains to power half. 
therefore by comparison x is equal to 1 over 8 to 1 therefore this one gives you that where there is x we put the 1 over 8 to 1 then use the calculator to come up with the required accuracy you remember to round off the required accuracy then question 15 came from your neighbor 1981 paper 1 question 3 and says expand this in ascending powers of x as far as the term in x cubed and then evaluate 3 to power a quarter correct to 3 significant figures so you come and expand it normally as we have always been doing then use the calculator to simplify to come up with that expansion then for the hence part the first thing to do is to look for the value of x so here it's 13 is the same as 16 minus 3 then pull out 16 to come up with that then simplify to come up with that therefore by comparison you realize that 3x is equal to 3 over 16 so shall come here and say that by comparison 3x is 3 over 16 therefore x is equal to 1 over 16 that means that this one is good by saying where there is x put there 1 over 16 but remember there was a 2 outside so you don't forget it then use the calculator to simplify and round out the required accuracy so now we shall go to the next part which is terms in, bi terms in a binomial expansion so sometimes we may be given an expression and they tell you to get the coefficient of x to power any value without first expanding it so if they tell you that you have to remember the where we started from so at the beginning of this video we saw that x power a to power n x plus a to power n is given by this formula so now this is the formula you can use to get the coefficient of x to power n value it can be x cubed x3 x4 x power 4 like that without first expanding So that knowledge, let's go through these questions. Question 1 came from your neighbor 2009, paper 1, question 9b, and says, find the coefficient of x in the expansion of this. Therefore, they want the coefficient of x to power 1. So the first thing to do is to remember the formula that this one is the summation from 0 to 10. So this 10 is because of this power then n combination r so n is 10 that is why you see here uh, 10 combination r so this r i don't know it then after that combination go to this first term put it here raise the power r then get this other term put it here raise the power n minus r which is now 10 minus r after that we shall use now some rules of indices so the general term is this which is that but they want x to power 1 so I have to use some rules of indices this one is already there this one is then here there is this 2 to this 2 over this both are affected by this power so 2 to power this gives you this then this is here then this one is 2 to power x power negative 2 which is here and this power which is there then same base you add the powers that is why you see here now x power r minus this which is that now from there you can get the coefficient of any term of x so in this case they want x power 1 x power 1 it means that the whole of this must be equal to 1 so when you do that you'll come here and say that this is equal to 1 then expand and make r the subject so r will be equal to 7 after getting that value of r you'll come here and say the coefficient will be this so come and put it here substitute for r here it was 10 to power combination r so it becomes 10 combination 7 here it was 2 to power 10 minus r so it becomes 2 to power 10 minus 7 and when i use the calculator i'll come up with 960 as the answer Then question 2 says find the coefficient of x power 17 in the expansion this. So still do the same, first code the formula. So this one is the same as the summation of this. So it will be 15 combination r, then this first term raised the power r, then second term raised the power 15 minus r. Therefore general term is that. Then try to use the rules of indices 
so this is there this is here and this is there then same base you add the powers to come up with so command this this to come up with that now from there we come back to the question they said x to power 17 that, that means that the whole of this power must be equal to 17 so command equate it to 17 and expand and simplify to get the value of r so r is 11 therefore come and put it your r here to come up with the required coefficient therefore 15 combination 11 gives you 1365 and that is the answer they wanted then question 3 says in the expansion this without first expanding find roman 1 the term in x power 6 and roman 2 the term independent of x so still you got the formula so this is 12 combination r then this one to power r and this one to power n 12 minus r general term will now be equal to that Simplify by using the rules of indices and collect like terms, same base, you add the powers to come up with this. Therefore, Roman 1, the term in x power 6 means that the whole of this is equal to 6. So, come and equate to 6 and simpl expand, simplify, and make r the subject. So, when r is 10, come and put your r here to come up with the required term, which is 66. Then Roman 2 said term independent of x, that means that it is x to power 0. That means that you come here and equate the whole of this power to, to 0. So when I equate it to 0, I come up with that. Then expand, simplify, get the value of r as 8. Therefore, the term will be 12 combination 8, which is 195. Then question 4 says, in the expansion this, without first expanding, find the term in x power 5 and the term independent of x. So first call the formula, 10 combination r, then this term raised to the power r, and this term raised to the power 10 minus r. Then use the rules of indices to simplify and collect like terms to come up with that. Then same base you add the powers to come up with this. Then from there you come and say that for the term in x power 5, this is equal to 5, therefore expand, simplify and get the value of r. Therefore the, the term in x power 5 will be this. Use a calculator to come up with that value. Then Roman 2, they want the term independent of x, therefore the power will be equal to 0. Expand, simplify, and get the value of r. Then come and substitute where there is r you put there. 6 to come up with the required term. So now shall go to the next part, which is Macrorin's expansion or Macrorin's theorem. Now Macrorin's theorem is used to expand function. So this was the word was. I would have written expand. So to expand functions which may not be expanded using binomial theorem. So there are some functions which have, for example, exponentials, natural logarithms, log, such functions, or cosine, sine, such functions you cannot use binomial expansion. Therefore, we opt to Macrorin's expansion. So it says that fx is equal to f0 plus x f prime 0 now if f prime 0 means the first derivative then x squared over 2 factorial f double prime meaning the second derivative then x cubed over 3 factorial multiplied by third derivative x power 4 over 4 factorial multiplied by the fourth derivative and the process continues so what you need to realize that the relationship between the power and the factorial if this x squared the factorial will be 2 factorial if it is x cubed, the factorial will be 3 factorial. And if it's x power 4, the factorial will be 4 factorial. Also, the derivative is the same. x squared, the derivative will be second derivative. x cubed, the derivative will be third derivative. x power 4, the derivative will be fourth derivative. I believe it is easier to memorize. 
So that is the only knowledge we need to know. So let's go through some of the questions. Question 1 came from your neb. 2010 paper 1 question 12b and says use Macquarie's theorem to express lean so this is lean on natural log sin x plus cos x as a power series up to the term in x squared so this part needs knowledge of differentiation so fx is this function which is given substitute where there is x put there 0 to come up with x0 so here this 0 sine 0 cos 0 sine 0 is 0 cos 0 is 1 that's why you see a lean 1 and lean 1 is equal to 0 then differentiate when I differentiate this I'll come up with this I believe by now you know how to differentiate because you already covered that topic and uh, calculus so I'll come up with this substitute 0 where there is x to come up with 1 then differentiate the second time this is the quotient so you use the quotient formula so quotient formula says this is now v and this is u therefore first make this denominator constant which is here multiply by the, the derivative of this numerator which is here then minus keep the numerator constant which is here then multiply by the derivative of the denominator which is there over the denominator squared which is there so that is quotient formula Simplify, you'll come up with that. Therefore, when I substitute where there is x, I put there 0, I'll come up with negative 2. So I'll come and say that by Macron's theorem fx is equal to that. We are solving on x squared because that's what they told us in the question. So I come and substitute fx is the lean sine x cos x and this f0 is 0 this one was 1 and this was negative 2. Simplify will come up with that and that will be the answer. Then question 2 came from your NEP 2009 paper 1 question 14a and says Use Macron's theorem to expand this up to the term in x cubed. So that means that fx is 1 over root of 1 plus x. By indices, this is the same as this. We are explaining this form so that we can easily differentiate. So when I put 0 here, I'll come up with f0 as 1. Then I have to differentiate it. Differentiating means bring down the power, which is that reduce this power by 1 so you come up with this the more power the derivative of the inner bracket so when I differentiate 1 plus x gives me 1 which is there then after that I'll come and substitute where there is x put there 0 to come up with a half then second derivative you'll come to this one still this negative half is maintained then now I'm going to differentiate this how? bring down the power which is this Reduce the power by 1, which is this, then derivative of the inner bracket, which is 1. S substitute 0, you come up with that. Then third derivative, the whole of this is this, 3 over 4. So I'm going to differentiate this. When I differentiate that, I'll say, bring down the power, which is this, reduce the power by 1, which is that, derivative of the inner bracket, which is that. So when I put x equal to 0, I'll come up with negative 15 over 8. Then you shall come and say, here and say that by Macron's theorem, that's the formula, then you shall come and substitute, fx is that, f0 is that, second, first derivative is that, second was that, and this was that. Use a calculator, I'll come up with this, which is the required expansion. Then question 3 came from your neb, 2006, by 1, question 14, and says, Part A, find the first three terms of the expansion, this, using Macron's theorem. Then part B, use Macron's theorem to expand tan x in ascending powers of x up to x cubed. So for part A, this is the function, so fx will be equal to that, 
negative indices to become x plus 1 raised to the power negative 1 for easy differentiation. So when I put 0 here, I'll come up with f0 as positive 1. Then differentiating, bring down the power to come out negative here. Reduce the power by 1 to come up with negative 2. Then derivative of the inner bracket, which is positive 1 there. So sub substitute x equal to 0, we'll come up with f prime 0 as negative 1. Then differentiate the second time. We're going to differentiate this, so bring down the power. It was negative 1 times negative 2 gives you positive 2, which is there. Reduce the power by 1 to give you negative 3. Derivative of the inner bracket is positive 1. So when I substitute x equal to 0, I'll come up with 2. Therefore, by Macron's theorem, fx will be given by that. Substitute f0 is that. First derivative was that. Second derivative it was 2. Therefore, simplify by using the calculator to come up with that expansion. Then for part B, part B they said use Macron's theorem to expand tan x in ascending powers of x up the term in x cubed. So that means that the function is tan x. So that of when x is 0, come up with tan 0 as 0. Differentiate tan x gives you sex squared x, which is 1 over cos x, therefore substitute to come up with 1. The one of the x squared x, bring down the power to give you this 2, reduce the power by 1 to give you this, differentiate sec x to come up with sec, sec x tan x. So this one can be simplified to become this, because this tan this gives you sec squared x, which is 1 over cos squared x. Then tan x is there, 2 is also there. Substitute x equal to 0 to come up with 0. So now this is the second derivative. Now third derivative, we have to differentiate this one. This becomes 2 sec squared x tan x, and that is the product. So we shall use product formula. When we use product formula, we shall come up with this. Remember it was 2 sec x tan, sec squared x tan x, so when I keep one constant, keep 2 tan x constant, differentiate sec squared x that we saw in the previous three, that is equal to this. Then plus, keep sec squared x constant, and differentiate 2 tan x to give you 2 sec squared x. Simplify to give you that. Then substitute where there is x, we put there 0 to come up with 2. By Macron's theorem, that is the theorem, therefore you shall come and substitute for f0, this here, and this, this was 0, and this was 2. Simplify, we come up with that as the required answer. Then question 4 say, came from your neighbor 2001, paper 1, question 11b, and says, use Macron's theorem to expand lean 1 plus ax where a is a constant and s or otherwise expand this up to the term in x cubed. Then for what value of x is the expansion valid? So the fx is that substitute x equal to 0, you come up with 0. Then differentiate this, you come up with this. Think remember how to differentiate natural logarithms. Substitute x equal to 0, you come up with a. Then when I differentiate this, I'll come up with that. Then substitute x equal to 0, I'll come up with negative a squared. Then differentiate this, you'll come up with this. Substitute x equal to 0, you'll come up with that. So by Macron's theorem, we have that. Therefore, when you substitute, you shall come up with that. Use a calculator, you come up with that. Then for the hence part.
the side hence or otherwise expand ln of 1 plus x over square root of 1 minus 2x. So this one can be expanded as ln of 1 plus x minus lin half ln of 1 minus 2x. The half is because of the square root. Therefore, by comparison, comparing this for the for this first term, a is equal to one. So put a equal to one, you come up with this. Then for the second for this second term, a is equal to negative two. So put negative two, you come up with that. So when you simplify, you come up with that. Simply collect like terms, you'll come up with that. So the expansion is varied for the magnitude of 2x less than 1, which is the same as negative a half, x greater than negative a half, or less than a half. Then question 5 came from UNEB, UNEB of March 1998, paper 1, question 8, and says, Use Macron's expansion to express this in ascending powers of x up to x power 4. So the function is this, which the breathe this two can come down to become two lean that. Substitute x equal to zero, you come up with zero. Then differentiate this, you come up with this. Substitute x equal to zero, you come up with two. Then differentiate this, differentiate this, bring down the power, you come with negative two. Derive the power by one, which is that. Derivative of the inner bracket, which is that. So substitute x equal to zero, you come up with negative two. Then you bring down the power, negative 2 times negative 2 is positive 4, which is there. Reduce the power by 1, which is that. Divide the inner bracket, which is that. So substitute x equal to 0, you come up with 4. Then the same, bring down the power, it becomes negative 12. Reduce the power by 1, which is that. Derivative of the inner bracket is that. So substitute x equal to 0, you come up with negative 5. So by Macron's theorem, we shall come here and substitute. Then use the calculator to come up with that. Then question 6 came from UNEB 1997, paper 1, question 6, 16a, and says, use Macron's theorem to expand this as far as the term in x cubed. fx will be equal to this, therefore substitute x equal to 0, come up with 0. Differentiate this, you come up with this. Substitute x equal to 0, come up with 1. Now this is a quotient, so quotient formula says, keep the denominator constant, which is here. Differentiate the numerator, which is there, minus. Keep the numerator constant, which is cos x multiplied by by the derivative of the denominator, which is also cos x. That is why you see here cos squared x. Then divide by the denominator squared, which is there. Then I simplify, I'll come up with this. Simplify further, I'll come up with that. Then the whole of this is equal to 1, so I put it here 1. Then factorize out negative 1 to come up with this. Then cancel 1 to remain with negative 1 over 1 plus sine x. Then substitute for x equal to 0, come up with negative 1. Then for the third derivative, we shall come up with this. Substitute x equal to 0, come up with 1. The next is to quote the Macron theorem, then substitute. Then use the calculator to come up with the required expansion. Now we shall go to question 7, which came from UNEB 1995, paper 1, question 12a, and says, Obtain the first two non zero terms of the Macron series for sec x. So that means that the function is sec x, which is one of our course. Substitute x equal to 0, come up with 1. So that is one term we are looking for the next non-zero term. 
So if you shade this, you come up with this. And substitute x equal to 0, you come up with 0. So we have to differentiate again. So this is product formula. So keep this one constant. You are going to keep this one constant. You shade this to come up with that. Plus, keep this one constant. You shade this to come up with sec tan. Simplify, you'll come up with this. Double substitute x equal to 0. You'll come up with 1. So we have got the two terms. Therefore, Shall come as code the Macron theorem, then substitute, and then use a calculator to simplify, and that's what they wanted. Then question 8 came from UNEB 1994, paper 1, question 9b, and says, given that y is equal to exponential of actan x, show that this is equal to 0. And hence, or otherwise, determine the first non 4 non zero terms of the Macron expansion of y. So this is what we are given. So let u be equal to this power which is actan x. That means that tan u is equal to x. Therefore dx du is equal to sec squared u. But sec squared u is 1 plus tan squared u. And tan u is already x meaning that tan squared u is equal to x squared. Now when you put u as this, when you put this u here it means that y is equal to exponential u and differentiate you come up with dy du equal to eu but t is already act an x so by chain rule dy dx is equal to dy du times u dx i think you remember that so come and substitute dy du and du dx so this was dx du meaning that u dx will be the reciprocal of this which is that Simplify, we'll come up with this because we already know that this one is equal to y. Though, so I'll come and put their y. Then second derivative, this is now quotient. Quotient formula says keep the denominator constant, which is this. Differentiate the num numerator, which is dy dx minus. Keep the numerator constant. Differentiate the denominator, which is this. Divided by the denominator squared, which is that. So when I simplify, I'll come up with that. But I already know that dy dx is equal to this. Therefore, I'll come and substitute. So here, one x plus one, 1 plus x squared, one of it will go here. Another one will remain with this y to come up with dy dx. So multiply by 1 plus x squared to come up with that. Then put everything on one side and factorize to come up with the required expression now for the hence part the hence part they told us that tensor otherwise determine the first four non-zero terms of Macron expansion of y So let fx be equal to that, meaning that f0 will be equal to 1, that is one term. The second term we saw that dy dx is equal to this, meaning that f prime x will be equal to, remember y is fx, therefore we put there y fx. The substitute x equal to 0, we will come up with f0 over 1 plus 0. Now f0, we already saw that it is equal to 1, so I will come and substitute 1 to, remain, to come up with 1. Now we also know that the second derivative is equal to that, therefore that means that f double prime x will be given by that. So dy dx is f prime x. So when I substitute, I'll come here f prime 0. And I already saw that f prime 0 is equal to 1. So I'll come and substitute 1 there. Then this one negative and negative gives you positive. And this one is 1, therefore in the end you come up with 1. 
then third derivative third derivative is somehow tricky because it combines quotient and product now quotient rule says keep the numerator constant sorry keep the denominator constant which is here differentiate the numerator now when i'm differentiating the numerator i rea realize that there is a product therefore product means keep one constant keep this one constant and differentiate this to come up with f double prime x then plus keep this first derivative constant and differentiate the whole of this to come up with negative 2 then minus keep the numerator constant which is this and multiply by the derivative of the denominator which is 2x everything divided by the denominator squared which is that so I come and substitute x equal to 0 and simplify to come up with negative 1 then by Macron's theorem first quote it then substitute and then use the calculator to simplify and that's what they wanted So now we shall go to question 9, which came from UNEB 1993, paper 1, question 5, and says, Use Macron's theorem to show that the expansion this up to the term in x cubed is, is this, and let's evaluate this to four decimal places. So this is fx, therefore, substitute x equal to 0 to come up with 0. Now this is a product, therefore, we use product formula to differentiate. So keep this one constant, differentiate this to come up with this, plus keep this one constant, which is this, and differentiate this to come up with negative e, and e negative x. That's why you see a minus here. Factorize out e negative x to come up with this. Then when x go to 0, you'll come up with 1. Then second derivative says there's a product. So product, keep this one constant, Differentiate this bracket to come up with this plus keep this bracket constant which is this then differentiate this to come up with negative e negative x that is why you see negative here simplify will come up with this the substitute x equal to 0 come up with negative 2 then for the third derivative this is also a product so keep this one constant you come up with this then differentiate this, you come up with that. Plus, keep this one constant, then differentiate the whole of this, you get, so negative 2 times negative 1 is positive 2, that's why you see a plus here. So you'll get positive, it will, you'll get negative, sorry, positive 2 e x e negative x, which is here. Simplify, you'll come up with that. Then substitute x equal to 0, you'll come up with 2. So by Macron's theorem, we shall come and quote the formula, then substitute and then simplify until we get the required expression. So the required expression will be that. When I factorize out x over 3, I'll come up with that, which is required. Now for the hence part, they told us hence evaluate this to four decimal places. That means that x is equal to pi over 3. So when x is equal to pi over 3, we shall come and say that this one will be equal to where there is x, we shall put there pi over 3. So this is x over 3, there is 1 over 3 here, then x is pi over 3 there. Then here put x pi over 3, put here pi over 3, you'll come up with this to four decimal places. Then question 10 came from UNEB 1989, paper 1, question 5b, and says, Use Macron's theorem to expand this as far as the term in x cubed. Now this is the quotient, and it may be a little is difficult to expand, so what we do, we use the rules of indices to bring this denominator up to become this. 
the reason is because the product is easier to expand so what you are going to do we are going to expand term by term we're going to first expand this one alone then also expand this one alone using the same method of macro rinse theorem so let fx be this first term therefore it is that they want x tube therefore we have to expand up to the third derivative so f0 will be that then differentiate it you'll come up with this so remember we say bring down the power reduce the power by one then differentiate the inner bracket which is negative one simplify will come up with that put x equal to zero we'll come up with that then second derivative still bring down the power so bring down this power which is this and this one is already there so it is here then reduce the power by one to come up with that then differentiate the inner bracket which is this remember this one and this one gives you post give you positive three which is here simplify you come up with that put x equal to zero come up with 12 then third derivative this times this times this is positive 12 which is here then bring down the power reduce the power by one differentiate the inner bracket which is that simplify or come up with that substitute x equal to zero come up with that therefore that means that expanding this one will give me that when i substitute in this formula now we also have to expand this one up to x cubed let's do that in the next slide so let gx be equal to sine x therefore put x equal to zero i'll come up with zero differentiate sine x i'll come up with cos x put x equal to zero i'll come up with one then differentiate cos x i'll come up with negative sine x put x equal to zero i'll come up with zero differentiate negative sine x i'll come up with negative cos x put x equal to zero i'll come up with negative one so that's the third derivative therefore shall stop and code the formula then substitute and to come up with that expansion therefore the required expansion you have to multiply the two and when I open brackets I'll come up with that and simplify to come up with that remember we don't exceed x cubed and that's what they wanted so that brings us to the next video thank you for watching and be reminded the next video will be on complex numbers so if you have not yet subscribed please click on the subscribe button below this video so that you can receive updates when the next video on complex numbers has been uploaded and also if you know any student who is not yet on this platform please share the link of this video with them via social media platforms like facebook and whatsapp so that will all benefit us a family